So, okay, here we are. Damiano Ramazzotti telling me about his projects. Yes. So, the, the project I'm, I'm showing you about is is actually born as part of my sort of meditative process, even though it's not related to meditation. Uh, it was the result of a couple of days of holotropic breathing, where the idea came to my mind is based on my previous experience in the field of nonprofits and community-based organizations. So what I had realized is that many organizations, when they are trying to engage their members, whether online or offline, uh, they t tend to do some sort of systematic mistakes. And so, first of all, if you're trying to engage a community of members, knowing their passions and skills is one of the useful things to just build contents and activities that match them. The second thing is when you have, you know, thousands of people you're trying to collaborate with, spam begins to be an issue because you, you begin to have communication with many people and so on and so forth. So based on this, I just came up with the idea of a tool that could support community-based organizations. And I think that the, the, the broader mission and the broader question is how lower right quadrant um, activity, so uh, sort of working in the collective objective sphere of technology platforms can improve the world and steer it in a healthy direction. So my this platform is basically just an experiment as part of this. So I'll give you just a quick sense of what it does. And I think my my definitely my dream is to use it also in a way in which I can support the uh, integral community, but I'm not like in a hurry to do so. I think it's yeah. just, just fine. Yeah. The use case that really makes sense, and uh, when it when the time will come, we'll, we'll do it. So okay, the thing was that we are looking for a platform in our small integral chat community, and you said that this is uh, there, and now we want to figure out if it can be the right thing for us, and so on. Yeah. So, so what you're seeing here is just like a mock uh, community. Uh, the platform allows people to register directly to a community, uh, even though it's an ecosystem where people can have a single account across many different organizations. Now, so let me immediately ask, is the community given or can I grow, uh, build my community in that platform? You can, you can create your community, you can create as many communities that are different ones, but mm -hmm. the content is actually interoperable. So that means that you can actually use this platform to support different organizations, but then help them network and collaborate and share human resources. So I think that there is a potential, a broader potential in terms of aggregating, on one hand, all the uh, integral communities out there, there are some, and also uh, to aggregate all those communities and organizations that are integral, but they're not sort of calling themselves such. And I think that these organizations could be very easily happy to collaborate with each other. Now, just to explain you what I'm doing here, the registration process, which is fully customizable. So what that means is that as we onboard members into a community, we can ask them whatever information we feel that is useful to afterwards uh, better engage them. Mm -hmm. Uh, the next step is that we can browse their skills. Uh, if you have a community of people, knowing what they can do, what they can offer, what they're competent in is really useful. And these tags, they can be customized to fit the organization. So if you're you know, an integral community, you may not ask the same competencies, you may ask some other ones. Mm -hmm. And then people can search their own skills here if they have more. And the same goes for informal interests because, you know, you have your passions sometimes and you don't consider them professional skills, but those could be the base for collaboration. So maybe I'm passionate about photography, martial arts, yoga, and so on and so forth. Uh, you can set up your sort of community rules as people join. Uh, you can set up community guides. Obviously now they're, they're empty. And then you access the, uh, the community. Now that, the, the tool is a modular tool. So what that means is that it allows you to have very different modules that you turn on and off depending on the need of the uh, organization. 
So this is an example of one of the organizations that are using our platform. They're called Garage Erasmus. They're like the LinkedIn of Erasmus generation. They're using our platform. They have about 15,000 people on board. Mm -hmm. And so the first feature that I'm showing you is the membership feature, membership directory. So let's imagine that in this community of 15,000 people, I'm looking for someone that is competent in psychology, design, and project management. And there they are. So basically what the platform is doing is that it's searching for people that have the right combination of skills so that I can get in touch with them. Within one specific community. Within one specific community, of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and as you can see here on the left-hand side, this is where I can switch from one community to, to another, depending mm -hmm. on the ones that I belong to. Once I uh, have discovered people's profile, I can... Um, say view the profile of a specific individual such as this one and if I want you know discover their skills find information about them and potentially get in touch with them directly via chat through the platform here mm -hmm. so one possible um, sort of goal that it could serve is that of um, helping us map very simply the integral community uh, this is a way you can uh, even geolocalize people. So you see here, you remember those skills that I mapped before. I can actually find all those people, how they're distributed geographically. Mm -hmm. This allows us to see, you know, where are integral people, where are cities where there's a critical mass and so on and so forth. So um, this, this platform, since it's modular, the platform does not necessarily need to be used always in the same way. It doesn't need to be used as a social platform especially given we have, you know, like the Integral Life Forum and we, we could create more. But already, for example, this, sorry, just having a database of the integral people out there could be useful when the moment comes that we need to actually sort of leverage that, that community collectively. And obviously this data is made available to anybody who's part of the community. Uh, all clear so far? That's very good. It's, uh... I like this. How do you get the information? Uh, for instance, the integral people, how do you collect them? Well, the, 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 the registration process is all done by the person. So it's the person that is adding the information. Uh, mm -hmm. So the key challenge is just to find those organizations or those people and make them aware of the platform so that they, they exactly. join. Uh, uh -huh. If they register via Facebook or LinkedIn, some information is automatically imported from those social media. And we would like to do more uh, in the future. Um, there is more to this project that I can expand upon maybe later um, in terms of really imagining what an integral social network looks like. And I do believe that communities could be the center of that because communities are the, um, the latest whole on in a sense that they are a whole on that kind of summarizes all the previous one. A company can be a community a association, a nonprofit, an informal group, and, and, and there are many other reasons that I can go into afterwards. But um, just to show you more, this is the social part of the platform. So in the social part of the platform, we have like a sort of wall, like Facebook, where people can generate contents. And on the left-hand side, as you see here, I can have uh, topics. So this is what allows us to have sort of a more um, organized discussion. So this is a community where one of the, the topics is how to work in your dream place, as well as um, you know, how to build your startup and so on and so forth. So people can follow the topics that they're interested in. They get notifications when there's new contents within that topic and then they engage within it. Um, so this is just a way to have, especially when you have really large communities, to just have a little bit of a more organized uh, structure. And then another, uh, so this is basically for the many-to-many -many communication. And then there is another functionality that is the, uh, we call it the activities features. And within this feature, basically, people can create groups or projects or even events, such as these ones. And when I, upon joining one of them, you see, uh, people can indicate roles. So if I'm launching a project and I need a designer, a developer, and a project manager, 
I can indicate those roles within my uh, request when I create the activity. And what that means is that the people with those skills will be notified so that they can join my project and we can collaborate. And once we've all joined that project, uh, obviously joining could be based on a, um, uh, let's say, selection process or anybody can join, such as how I've done now. So as you can see, upon joining this activity, a chat has been created. And here I have all the projects in which I'm involved in. And I can also find down here, uh, ah, sorry, my activities, G4 Istanbul, this group, so I can click and just access directly that chat. And so the idea is to separate communication in small groups and teams with communication in large numbers of uh, people. Mm -hmm. And to the small groups, uh, everybody has access of the big group or is it exclusive? Or? Uh, it, it can be set. Every group can say whether it's closed or open or every project mm -hmm. can say whether they're closed or open. Or you can even set certain roles. So you can say if you're a normal participant, you can just join. But if you're a DJ of the party, I would like to vet you a little bit. So you mm -hmm. can apply. Mm -hmm. um, another thing that can be done is something called activity templates. I think activity templates would be particularly interesting for the integral community to save templates or best practices of projects, events, or initiatives that have been successful elsewhere. And what the platform does, it just allows you to save them. Anybody can browse them. They can say, hey, if someone does them, I'm, I'm interested. Or with one click, they can actually copy paste those activity and implement them in their own context. So, um, again, as you can see, this is not like something that every community or every organization may need, but it is something that can be useful if you're looking to share uh, these kind of uh, information and uh, templates. Um, so what I showed you now is the social part. Uh, the, the next thing that I wanted to show you just very quickly is just some of the modules because they actually constitute a potential for even inventing integral businesses, which I'd be happy to support providing the technology. Um, just to give you an example, here the platform provides a job board. A so what? A job board. Job board, okay. A recruitment board. So yeah, yeah. we want to create a directory of integral companies where they can recruit <laughs> integral people. Like I, I'm, I'm just brainstorming here. That could actually be a business and we could set that up in five minutes. So anybody, I mean, not even me, anybody could just create a community and say, well, I want a job board. I will recruit companies and I'll post job offers and I can charge them for doing so and so on and so forth. So, and you can receive application from here and so on and so forth. Um, another example of modules that we have is, for example, the possibility to... Um, uh, the possibility, sorry, let me, let me find you a community in which to show you here because I think here I didn't set any. Uh, it is possible within the community to book resources. So say you have a physical space, you have a, uh, you know, this we do for co-working spaces or a laboratory. Ah, sorry, I logged out from here. I will show you afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, we can share and book resources. So if I have a physical device that I can make available to my community or in the future, even my time, that can be done. Um, and what else? In general, the platform also manages payments. So if you want your community to be sustainable and actually charge people for belonging to it, you can do it. Uh, and in the future, what we're doing is just adding modules uh, as a way to further tailor the, the community to the needs of others. So as, as I mentioned, I'm not necessarily sure that the platform is what is needed for our small group. Um, but in general, for the integral community at large, I think there could be some space to uh, explore at least mapping who's out there as a starting point and then, and then take it from, uh, from there. Okay, that's great. But let's, let's brainstorm about, we are a group now of nine people. Mm -hmm. Maybe there will be coming more because we are yeah. right at the beginning. How would you set up this group here? How would you, you know, we, we, the need was to have a sort of a forum where we can publish yeah. uh, our 
community talks and then uh, uh, observations, sí. which everybody had and uh, going deeper by their own thoughts, because in the talk of one and a half hours, you just open the, the box and then everybody might want to write something down and uh, share it with the others. And that we can have that uh, together with the call. Yeah. Uh, posted somehow and then also when we do private calls like ours now that okay. there is also a space that we can allow group members to to watch that and say what they think give comments and uh, questions and and whatever yeah. how would you do that well it, it, the, the the key point would be to create topics so for example so many of our conversations touch on specific topics so each level could be a topic each quadrant could uh, be but so let's let's let me ask first you have to create the group see 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 but it takes two minutes so uh, okay uh, uh, do it do it here on the on this uh, so. I, I, I would rather do it maybe like when we close the call okay. because i need to just access the admin panel do a couple oh, of okay things. sure yeah um mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just do it right after you just mm -hmm. create the community we create some topics based mm -hmm. on the topics that we're interested in and then we can begin posting contents and just having the topics out there can help us remember uh, mm -hmm. discussion thing. Sorry, let me close my Skype so that I can... <laughs> yeah, people want you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, here it is. Okay. And um, so that, that would be the first thing. Now, another interesting thing is that, for example, I have some projects ideas that I would like to pitch to the different members of even our small group. Mm -hmm. And these are probably project ideas that not everybody is interested in. So I could just post them whoever is interested join and then we chat about them you know on the side or if i want to con continue my conversation with you via chat or stuff like that i don't have maybe your whatsapp number and so on and so forth we can continue it here mm -hmm. so that, that is an idea um of, of how we could structure it so what, what i will do after our call is that i'll set up a space we can take a look and we see if if it makes any sense to, to test it out. And then uh, from there, we can cross refer to other websites and whatever. Uh, yeah, you can, you can link contents. If you have YouTube videos, they will be automatically embedded. Mm -hmm. So whatever you, you've published on, on YouTube, we just put the link here and you would be able to view all the videos directly from the platform. And is there also the possibility, like for instance, Google Calendar, you could insert in your website. Is that also uh, embedding? Well, you can create events. So by creating event, you, you wouldn't use Google Calendar directly, but you create events and it, it creates sort of a schedule of events, mm -hmm. like I showed before in the group page, but mm -hmm. for events. And the other thing is that when you join an event, it, uh, you will have an option to add that event to your Google Calendar. So okay, it, but it, the question was, if you can also, Google Calendar, I can embed in my website. No, I can no, no, no. We, embed we don't do that. Uh, videos and stuff. And this, uh, you can embed Facebook uh, in the website, you know, if you want the Facebook groups, I think. Can you embed that too? You, what you can do is that you can basically, every content that has been generated within the platform, if the platform is set to be public, with one click can be shared on social media. On external social media, media, but not on your website. No, I can share it on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, so the, the connections are, are more going outwards. So the mm -hmm. content that I generate, I can reshare uh, outside. Um, as I mentioned, Google Calendar, again, we have an internal events tool, but then when you join an event, you can save it. So even just to keep track of when our events are, so when our mm -hmm. chat into mm -hmm. chats, we could just put it there, put all the data, so we have a single place where that is recorded. And one important thing is that you can link this directly from your website. Mm -hmm. So we could go on the website and have a login register button directly on the website. You click, and from there you access directly the community that we will have. Okay, uh, maybe that's the question I had, yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. good. So I'll set it up and I'll send you a link and then we can check it out. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. So since when are you doing this? Too long. I've had the idea, like, <laughs> it's a bit shameful. I've had the idea in 2009. Uh, 10 years. That takes yeah. time. <laughs> so I had, I'd be, and what happened is that I just like, I just sat on the idea for a while because I had no entrepreneurial background, nor technology background. So I just had to figure it out. And I struggled a little bit to find co-founders at the beginning. 
found some, they left, like the, the usual thing. Then I took some sort of entrepreneurship courses. And then I was lucky enough to win a contest, go to Silicon Valley in 2014 and meet the company that I, that invested in our platform. They basically asked me to work for them for two years. And in exchange, they would invest in my platform, we would develop it internally. And, now, and then I would launch it as my own company. Uh, and so this is what I did. So since 2016, I've been full-time on this project. We fundraise from investors. Uh, so, some, of the, like, some of the investors we raise from are some of the most important in the world, like 500 Startup is, a, is an accelerator. Um, and now basically on one hand, I'm looking to just grow the business. We work with large enterprises, but on the other hand, I'm, I'm looking to see how it can really be scaled made available to as many people as possible. Um, I'm considering like at some point open sourcing some parts of the platform. We wanna make all the data owned, physically owned by the users. So it's kind of transitioning to what is, is, is now referred as the decentralized web. Mm -hmm. The decentralized web is really the next evolution of a web that is not owned and controlled by a few technology players, but where really users are in charge. And I think in terms of if we have to map, like plot the evolutionary unfolding of society, it generally is always about something that is owned by a few people becoming owned by more people, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's education, whether it's access to technology and so on and so forth. And the next step is user data. Like user data needs to be owned by users. And so we we're now working to uh, be in that direction and help communities guide this process essentially. Okay, so uh, that's uh, the idea is, is perfect because it's actually really missing. And I'm thinking about the integral conferences where you need to, to go and, and uh, present it and uh, uh, get people to, to adhere for the integral uh, group. Um, the question is now, what is it uh, in part of the financial? You probably ask money, at least to the enterprises. To the so, enterprises, yes. yes. To the small <laughs> communities. Well, the, the thing is that, like, um, for me, it, 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 it makes sense to ask money if, if to, to issue the invoices cost me less than the actual money that I would receive. And at this stage, these kind of communities are, are sufficiently small and sufficiently interesting that it is also in my own business interest to give the community for free. Mm -hmm. uh, so everybody who is interested, for instance, in the, in the integral community yeah. group we, we yeah. create, they yeah. can come in for free and, yeah. uh, and we will uh, work on some community guidelines uh, so that, oh, now it's my telephone. It seems to be in the morning, <laughs> just a minute. <laughs> I hardly ever get telephone calls since I do everything on internet, but then when we do recordings, then they come. <laughs> I, I actually, I got a new phone and I, I mean, it, this sounds funny since I have a tech company, I don't know how to mute it. Like I still <laughs> haven't learned, like I know how to mute it, but I keep getting Skype messages and like, yeah. Yeah. the answer is just to put it under a pillow or something. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So everybody oh, okay. can join and we will have uh, the spam thing. Uh, tell me a little bit more about that because the, in every community there begin to be problems sooner or later with people who bring in not related stuff or let's say stuff which is maybe only interested to them and they push it and the rest of the community is not really happy with that. So how can we um, do that? Do you already have experience with these yes. things? Mm -hmm. So, well, th there are two levels. The first is the selection level. So it depends how, how inclusive you want to make the community. And the second is, so, and you can approve who joins and so on and so forth. The second thing is the concept of topics that I showed you before, which is sort of like Facebook groups. The more granular those topics are, the more you make sure that the right content is placed in the right topics. And depending on the topics that you're actually following, you will receive an email telling you that there is new content. So what that means is that, let's say Damiano is super interested in the decentralized web and nobody else cares, 
we create a topic, I post all my contents there, and only the people who are interested in that will actually follow it and get notifications. So that allows you a little bit to, to parse the, the content and not just be overwhelmed with things that you may not be interested. Okay, and then there needs a sort of a, <clears throat> a control that really the content is in the right place and not, you know, somebody and is that, posting. And, and that responds to, to really being clear with the members. It, there are different ways in which you can clarify it in the platform and registration or in the topics as to what is expected of, of them. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I had in mind was even to create topics by level, but the level is not necessarily the... Um, the topic of the discussion, but the mode of the discussion. So you remember we were chatting, like we could have a red room or a beige room where we're really harsh with each other, and then a green room where we're a little kinder, and then an integral one where we wrap it all together. So I think that there are many, many things that we can experiment with. Yeah, that would be nice. And also a comedy room. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I was talking about this with Ryan in the fact that like inter-level comedy is something badly needed because if you look at the basic world of comedy nowadays is green making fun of everybody else. It's green and, and uh, just rational and pluralist just making fun of all the other guys, which is fine. But if I was one of the other guys, I wouldn't like those shows. And therefore having like opportunities for like comedic exchange in these things, I think it, it could make the integral world a little bit more fun. Yeah, and it would help us to learn the language of the other yeah. levels because yeah. we don't know it anymore. We assume somehow that it is, as we saw in our last talk, talking about beige, we didn't know that there is so much to talk about. Yeah. And then the next That's step good. would be exercising to talk as if we were in beige, how right. the conversations would be. They would be completely different. That's, that's a, a, a a good, a good idea. So we have to think out how to structure this. Uh... But this falls also into the other idea that I was pitching you the other day about like actually collecting perspectives, like taking topics and making an effort of describing each topic from the point of view of each uh, variable, essentially, because that would be an amazing resource because then you can look at the topic, say, of homosexuality and say, okay, what is the, you know, how does the view change depending on where you are at? And it, it should be done in a way that honors these point of view rather than mock them. And I think there would be a great benefit in general of recording these conversations. And I think that also we need to invite people from different points of views, different perspectives, and interview them using integral model to really sort of map what they're saying and, and find the truth that, that is lost often in, in translation. And, um, and I do see this, this other project, which I've also pitched to Ryan, he's very enthusiastic, as a parallel activity that I would really like to work on. Um, it, that needs a little bit more of, of, of course, effort yeah. because you have to go there and you have to find the people no. and first uh, um, make them comfortable that they speak with you. That m begins to be some sort of work, you know? Yeah, of course, Why of course. We're now uh, talking more about our own learning about uh, these things, you know? But that's a good idea. That yeah, and, I, and I'm not excluding, like, I, I think that if we structure it if a little further in the frame of integral theory, uh, my goal is to, to, to look for funding for these other parts of the projects. Uh, whether it's a public funding or some like uh, investors and I would like to pitch it within the integral community and see if there are some people who are interested. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that um, Derwin Foster together with Ken is uh, collecting all the integral initiatives they want to make a sort of a, 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 a list. Yeah, uh, and this, the platform itself would be perfect to map all that is going so on. So we, I will contact him and uh, maybe contact other p people I know, and we, you can write maybe great. we do That'd that together in some way. And then I recommend to go to the conferences. I plan to go to the conference uh, in South Africa to finally have some time out and off here and get some new uh, perspectives yeah. that will be in May. And if you prepare uh, things for me so uh, I can take them, that would be fine. That would be fantastic. And next, there is the regathering in, in Vienna. 
Yeah. Uh, I cannot go there, but um, it's also in May. And then the next uh, European conference in, in Hungary next, uh, next year. That's, that's the place where we can create uh, the, the basis for such a group. Well, and and, and there, there is one thing to consider that, like, I think that is a bit overlooked in the story of the evolutionary unfolding in the lower right corner that we don't notice is the fact that w you, you get a shift to the next level anytime that the the next level of development gains sufficient strength whether it's financial strength political strength uh, military strength in the case of the french revolution which i'm not recommending <laughs> no. but, but the idea is that the switch happen when they join forces and the problem is that the integral world hasn't like yet really looked at history and said ah we need to not saying that we need to unionize but we need to form a collective that, that tries to somehow speak with one voice and speak with all the other levels, of course, but that, that has a, uh, again, a collective power, a collective strength. And to me, that, that would be um, the perfect early adopters of our platform, in a sense, who, who better than the integral community. So that's why my enthusiasm is just saying, hey, just take it, see, run with it. Um, but I'm also enthusiastic about the idea of building integral business models. Like we don't have a lot of integral businesses. Uh, there are many people who are doing business, business with uh, the integral map underlying. And you can see it in the in teal, uh, um, the, the teal group from the Hungarian um, uh, conference. They, they appeared twice now. And I can also put you in contact with them. Yeah. And there are, there are, but they are not connected. That's exactly. the thing, you know, yeah. that's, that's the main thing. Yeah. And so maybe you try to solve the same problems often and they just reinvent the wheel. Whereas. Yeah. And they, they more or less everybody does it by themselves. There is this book. Uh, I think I mentioned it from Frederick Laloux, reinventing mm -hmm. organizations. And he was the, let's say, the starting point uh, because he uh, looked into certain businesses who worked differently. And he discovered that they have, they are, let's say, in the integral level, that they are self-organized in a certain way. Yeah. And afterwards, uh, so many other uh, people came out and said, oh, we are doing things like that. So that was a moment of, uh, as far as I know, of, of the beginning of people coming together and talking about how to uh, do business, not only differently, but on the integral level. Yeah. And they call it teal startups or something. I can uh, get you in contact with Gertraud. She's one of our Women Matters, Women Matters uh, participant. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, she is very active in that. And I know that there are... Um, many many people and if you go into the website of integral european conference and there might still be from the past conferences the programs and there you find the the names uh, of these okay. people maybe I, I can help you with that and uh, we, we should uh, I, I think yeah I think, meant a lot of things i think for let's say for the, for the um, presentation of what you are doing this should be enough that yeah. I want to share that with, uh, um, put it on YouTube and share it with as many people who might be interested as possible. Yeah. And then we talk about the, the details. Okay. Yeah, absolutely.